Hello, I'm Phil Miller and I will be working on what it takes to digitize a geologic cross-section in ArcGIS using the NCGMP09 or GEMS data model. This is not an exhaustive tutorial on the concepts of digitizing a cross-section and it's also not a 3D cross-section or block model. It's just simply a way of getting the cross-section into a GIS geodatabase. It allows for the map to be more complete and more user-friendly when you share out map packages and stuff like that. So this will follow very similarly from digitizing my correlation map units, which is now complete up here. This will be kind of a follow-up and similar process to what we did in that, but adapted to the process of digitizing a cross-section. So right off the bat, one of the things that uh, we'll see uh, starting off is that my data frame window is locked and that's a uh, locked map scale so that uh, right off the bat we can go ahead and put some parameters in here so that we have the ability to make this be the appropriate size for our cross section and one of the things we'll do is I have made a um, TIFF image of the cross section that's already made and it's another statement that I'll make that more than likely uh, making a cross section from scratch in ARC while possible is actually a little more tedious and will probably be covered in some other video. Um, I have done it before. There is some unique challenges to it and there's some unique advantages to it as well. But uh, I have come to decide that one of the easiest things to do is go ahead, sketch it out analog on a piece of paper, on a piece of mylar or something like that and it gives you the ability to control and edit and erase and change things much faster than you can do it in ArcGIS or even a designer program like Adobe Illustrator. There's just a lot of benefit from having your um, paper copy be where you're doing your edits and changes and uh, adjustments than trying to do it in ArcGIS. So we'll see that we have a cross-section line right here on our map. And the cross-section has already been uh, 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 drafted by hand. So we want to get that hand-drafted uh, cross-section into the map. But one of the first things that we need is to get this located in a um, spatially enabled and also non-vertically exaggerated uh, data frame window so that we can actually digitize it. We need a couple bits of information. And one of the first things that we need is to find out the length in meters of this cross section. And you'll see why in just a second. If we get that locked down and then also compare it to the elevations that we see in our cross section, we can then make this be unvertically exaggerated and be in roughly a spatial uh, location that makes sense. So, right off the bat, that's one of the things that we want to do is we want to get this distance measurement the A to A prime measurement, and then also do some conversion for the elevation change. If we open our geologic map, we can see that in the cartographic lines, if we open the attribute table for that, our cross-section length is total length is 11,291 meters and some change. And I want to go ahead and write that number down so that I have that locked in. And I'm going to switch to data view now. So we're in the data view of my cross section with the scale locked and it'll be a little bit of a pain in the butt with it locked. So what we'll do is we'll switch that to an automatic scale and then we'll want to start an editing session on our geologic cross section. We'll go to the create features and I will select a line that makes the most sense. So what I'm going to start digitizing first is my cartographic lines. And these are the generic lines that I need to be able to build my cross section. And the one that's most important is that initial map boundary. We can drag 
drag and drop in our cartographic lines. Open that attribute table. And if we zoom to that location, now at least the cross-section line is in New Mexico and it's off kilter and stuff like that. We can deal with that. But what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start drawing a line to begin with that is roughly in the location of our cross-section line. And this allows it to at least be located in New Mexico, even though we're not dealing with XYZ space, we're just dealing with XY space. We are going to digitize our cross-section in XY space. And you'll see that that's a lie of ArcGIS, but it is one of the ways that we can at least get it into a geodatabase and represented for use on the geologic map. So we're going to go ahead now and I'm going to start my line. I'm going to click my first control point. I'm going to drag over and then I'm going to use the uh, Delta X Y tool to make my line the correct length and to have zero uh, y change. So there is my line. I'm going to go ahead and stop the line here, hit F2, so that now we have the line and I no longer need this in my cross section. So now we have our cross section line. And from here we can also see that there's roughly 2,000 feet of offset here. So we'll have to do some math to get this feet measurement into meters. And then once we have that taken care of, we can go ahead and get this geo-referenced in to our map and start digitizing that. So I'm going to go ahead and do the math off video and I'll get that all set up and know the measurements for it. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and draw in ArcGIS, these vertical risers so that we have our elevation bars. And again, we're not digitizing Z here, we're just digitizing X and Y. So it's again a trick of ArcGIS, a, a, a fib on our part, but we'll go ahead and get those uh, elevation bars set up over here to be the correct dimensions. And then once we have that squared away, um, we'll digitize them in. Okay, so now that we have done our conversion, we know that the cross-section elevation goes from 3,000 to 7,000 meters feet, excuse me, 3,000 to 7,000 feet, which is 4,000 feet change, which converts to 1,219.2 meters, give or take a little bit. So what we need to do now is make vertical bars that are 1,219.2 meters. So we'll switch back over to ArcGIS. We'll go to our map boundary tool again. We'll go ahead and again, click our first control point and then using delta x delta y I will convert this to 1219.2 meters and we'll do the same thing over here Now we've got our elevation change all set up and we can go ahead now and geo-reference the image that we need for digitizing. So I'm going to go ahead and add in that layer now. Now we'll zoom to and start geo-referencing.
and I'm just trying to get it approximately correct. I mean, we know that there's more precise ways to do this, and the best way to do it is to actually generate a profile using um, X, Y, and M um, measurements, but for all intents and purposes, this works just fine. It's not the most ideal, but it will work. And again, some of the benefits that come from drafting this uh, analog uh, sure make it a little more convenient to work with. But now we can see that we've got our cross-section geo referenced in. We can just continue working from this to go ahead and draw in the profile itself and uh, start digitizing in our contacts and faults. So let's rectify this image. Make sure we're saving it in the right location. Add in our geo-referenced image. I'm going to adjust the display parameters again so that it doesn't look so saturated. And now we're ready to digitize. So very quickly we can see how easy it is to get in a hand-drawn analog or a Illustrator version that's exported to a TIFF or something like that in to begin digitizing. Um, I'm not going to go through the process of digitizing in all of these contacts and stuff like that uh, because that should be pretty self-explanatory. We'll use you know contacts and faults where we have contacts and use faults where we have faults. I don't believe this map. Oh yeah, it does. So here, this line would be a fault. This would be our surface contact, quote unquote. So we'll call it a contact. This intercalated, interfingered contact here, we'd call that a contact and digitize in. Um, as that is, we have some internal contacts in here separating these F and C layers, and those are described uh, right here, what those mean. Um, but we we'll need to go ahead and digitize in those internal contacts. And then we can either decide to put in a uh, pattern in here and in here in our uh, CSA mapped unit polys, or we can go ahead and draw in some bedding layers in here. I will uh, probably end up using patterns because that's what you what is used in here currently. But there's a couple things we need to talk about. We need to digitize in a well, which will be a cartographic line. It could also be in geologic lines, but I think I'm going to put that in cartographic line. Uh, it tends not to really be a ge uh, ge excuse me, geologic line. It's not really a geologic line, so it should probably best be in here. Um, the other comment I will make is we need to go ahead and put in our elevation and feet and all of that stuff. So commonly what we do is our elevation on the right hand side will be in meters and on the left hand side it will be in feet. So one of the things that we can do right off the bat and we'll see how accurate this um, cross section was drafted is I'm going to choose my elevation feet. I'm going to set this one to be my 3,000 above mean sea level. But one of the tricks that I've learned is I can draw a line that is that dimension much faster than I can do a, um, a move. So we can put in control points so that we have our 1,000 feet interval um, separating these two points. So I've pasted a uh, point in. Let's go ahead and create a line then. And this is just going to be a cheap line, a uh, cheat line. So I'm going to go ahead and use leader and we'll delete it later on. So again, draw my line, use my delta xy, do zero, and that's 304.8 meters to do a thousand feet. Hit F2, and now we've got a sticking point, a, a uh, snapping point to use. So what I'm going to do is go ahead, select one of my points, and 
And now I can very easily grab that, snap it to the end point of my cartographic lines, and change that to be the 4,000 feet above mean sea level. And we see the label change. And then we can also just go ahead and select that uh, line again. And we can do some moving and stuff like that. I, again, I still find it just faster to go ahead, draw a fake leader line, put in my first control point, use my delta xy, do 304.8 meters again, hit F2. We now have that. And then we can come to our elevation and feet label, put that one in and attribute it as 5,000 feet. And go back to create features, make a leader line, snap it to our last point, delta xy, put in my elevation in feet, attribute that as 6,000, and then we can do the final one up here. And sure enough, we can see that that was actually digitized. It was drafted in ArcGIS and Adobe Illustrator pretty darn well because those were lining up uh, very, very well. And just like that, we now have our scale bar on the other side. And much in the similar way that we drafted our uh, elevations, we can go ahead and put in our cross section labels. I'm going to put that right there. I'm going to attribute its label with A. We can go ahead and use uh, the same thing to uh, draft in a cross-section label here. That is also the statement of West. One issue that we'll have with that is they will try and be overlapping. So we'll have to do some uh, adjustments um, with our labeling so that those will label in a more appropriate way. But very quickly, we can get those points in. And then we can see that we've got our elevations set up. And then all we have to do is come over here, do a little bit of wizardry and conversion to get these placed in. And one of the best things that I have found to do is if um, this is 3,000 feet, I cheat and I make a leader line. And if we're doing 3,000 feet, because we want to get to that uh, sea level, what I do is I draw a leader line down, again using delta xy, and now we have a zero elevation. And the scale starts at zero, whether it's meters or feet. And from here, we can go ahead and jump up our 250 um, meters for each segment and get in our elevation changes for here. So this makes it really kind of nice and convenient. So I'm going to go ahead and cheat again, draw a leader line, go from zero, do my delta xy to be 250 meters. And one of the other benefits is if you have snapping turned on to vertices, you can do this in one continuous line. So I'm just going to keep doing delta xy in 250 meter increments. And as long as I'm snapping to my vertices, I can get this taken care of with just one line. And voila, now with snapping, I can go ahead and put in my different, and I have snapping to vertices on, vertex on. So now I can use these as my 250, 500, jumping over it, 500, 
to uh, 750, etc., etc. So one thing I'm going to do right off the bat, so I don't have issues with the other line that is there, I'm going to go ahead and delete my initial line that got me to zero, and now all I have is the vertice line with these. So we have uh, 250, 500. 750 and here's our 1000 meter so we'll select the elevation in meters snap to my vertex at 1000 and label it appropriately so there's 1000 there is 1250 1500 and now we have our meters set up as well and we can go ahead and delete our unused lines put in our A prime. And our west labels, or east labels. And again, like I said, we'll have to do some manipulation of the labeling here to make this a more appropriate label. But very quickly now, we have the ability to digitize in our cross sections. In an incorrect XYZ space, but nonetheless, they're in the geodatabase and then can be packaged with the map package and set up on the map sheet. To be displayed at scale. So that's one of the benefits of doing it with uh, having these having a spatial coordinate system is then we can actually digitize them at map scale. We know our vertical exaggeration is not exaggerated at all. We know our horizontal quote unquote horizontal distance is exactly accurate and it makes it very convenient and easy to include a cross section in our geologic map inside the geo database versus being a figure. And then because this is a vector file, it's also much smaller than inserting, say, a PDF or some or a TIFF of the um, AI drafted version. And the other additional benefit is then we can take the colors from the map itself and apply them to the correlation of map units and our cross section. One of the other things that we can do is once we have our correlation of map units that contains all of the map units that are on the map and in the cross section, we can have it generate our explanation or uh, description of map units. Uh, one other comment that I will make, let's switch back to, is currently these lines are cartographic lines. What we need to do is copy them and paste them into contacts and faults so that we have our boundary conditions so that when we do feature to polygon we can create we can have our contacts and faults create our polygons and then have our labels for our polygons generated from our map unit points so let's do that really quick as well let's go ahead and select our bounding conditions, edit, copy, edit, paste, paste into contacts and faults. Let's open the attribute table for that. And we'll see that our symbol is that 001.01.01 already so that we can go ahead and have this symbolized the appropriate way. Then we can go ahead and turn off our cartographic lines and know 
that when we come in to digitize our profile, for example, we will be snapping to the contacts and faults so that we can start digitizing in, and I'm not going to do this right now, but to give you an idea, our profile line. So that's how we digitize our cross sections in ArcGIS for a NCGMP09 or GEMS data model here at the New Mexico Bureau of Geology and Mineral Resources. Again, I'm Phil Miller and I've been your host. Thank you very much for your time and have a great day.